It's been a while since I mentioned anything about my wish to get into property, so I thought I'd give you a quick update on what's happened. It took me a few years to make peace with the possibility of becoming a landlady again. I wasn't sure about the whole hassle of property ownership. Yes, it's true that I can have the property managed and won't need to do much, but before buying this house with my ex-partner, we owned a small flat. We didn't need to sell that flat, so it became a buy-to-let. And even though it was managed, sometimes we'd end up with issues like complaints from neighbors. And then later on, when I wasn't a co-owner anymore, uh, I learned that the tenants caused quite a lot of damage to that place, which led to renovation costs beyond the usual wear and tear, of course. I accepted that it was a risk that I could literally calculate, meaning I could put some funds aside and be prepared for. Ethically, on the other side, I have no interest in contributing to the housing crisis. Never had, never will be. But I couldn't see how, given today's British housing policy, the crisis would be stopped by removing private renting as an option. I rented for years, I know my reasons for that, and no, they were not always just because I couldn't afford home ownership. To me, to become a good landlady, I needed to make sure that I would not choose profit over people and not choose people over my own health. And to do that, I needed to make sure I'm financially stable enough to survive not only the increasing interest rates of mortgages, but also situations like evictions or bad tenants. I mean, if you ever watched Nightmare Tenants Slam Landlords, you know what I'm talking about. These situations happen rarely, but they do happen and it's really essential to be prepared for them. So my idea was to start with fully managed service accommodation in the northeast of England and see how this goes. I ran the numbers and started looking for a business partner. I don't care about getting rich fast and quite frankly my idea of rich is very modest for today's standards. I did a very simple life and my inner peace is what I value much more than what many people would call an exciting lifestyle. It's not easy to find a business partner when you don't network, you don't go to property investing events or simply know people with a risk tolerance as high as yours. Some of my friends were keen but didn't have money. Ironically, the ones who did have money, I wouldn't go to business with. Finally, my boyfriend decided to give this idea a go. So we agreed I'll do all the work, the admin, so the applying, calling, chasing up, as he was far too busy running his own business. And to make things fair, we agreed he'd cover 65% of the costs and I'd cover 35%, but we will split the profits equally. So 50-50 going forward. Soon enough, I was talking to sourcing people up north who were very efficient. And I think in the second week or so, had an interesting property for us to take a look at. Now, taking a look at a property when you use a sourcing agency and live hundreds of kilometers away from that property means considering a PDF document with photos, initial mini survey of potential renovation needs and numbers to crunch. That is it. That's all. We wanted to spend maximum £50,000 on this, all things included. And we were finding out that even though these numbers seemed high, we were very likely to go over our budget. So we said no to a few properties. Service accommodation is not as popular as buy-to-let properties and comes with a set of unique rules. Pretty much everything costs much more. Mortgages, for example, when arranged through a limited company are not your typical buy-to-let mortgages that my mortgage broker, the one I always call when remortgaging this house, could even help me with. So you need a commercial mortgage. Solicitors fall in the same category of a bit more specialist, so also a bit more expensive. This is the cost of doing business and like with anything really, the more potential profit there is to be made, the more middlemen, the more fees turn up and the more slices are being taken. A quick one, as much as I'm keen on doing things myself, so sorting out my pension, investing, managing debt, I'm fully aware that you might not be as comfortable dealing with your money. 
And let's face it, there are situations in life that doing it yourself simply won't cut it. I wouldn't like to apply for a mortgage without help. You probably wouldn't dream of dealing with unexpected inheritance on your own. Pensions are so easy to understand until they're not. And let's not even go down the rabbit hole of insurance. Unbiased, who kindly sponsored today's video, help you take care of your money to-do list. One job at a time. They work in a very similar way the online tradesperson finders do. So you let them know what your next money job is, they ask you some simple questions, and based on your answers, match you with a few of their 27,000 independent advisors. This takes only one minute. You or somebody you know can give Unbiased a go using my referral link and get the first consultation for free. So go and find it in the description of this video. Finally, in October last year, a property that ticked many boxes appeared and we made an offer. With property, they never tick all the boxes, do they? Anyway, it was a two bedroom mid terraced house suitable for service accommodation. And this is what the numbers looked like. First, the house needed some work and that was going to cost more or less £6,000. The main thing was lack of central heating. So the house had electric heating, so electric heaters, and that's just not good enough for short-term lets. That was estimated to cost £4,500 to install. Then some necessary decoration, about £600. The interior already looked modern and clean, which is also the usual rule for functional service accommodation, you know, not the glamorous, hip or designer one, but the type aimed mainly at contract workers, not tourists. But all rooms still needed a bit of refreshing, so I won't use the expression a lick of paint. I simply refuse to use that expression. Two more things, a fuse board and new sockets also made it to the to-do list. They cost £800 in total. So now you've had some numbers, let's have some more numbers. The purchase price was £93,000, so the required deposit, which is 25% standard for any buy-to-let or service accommodation, would be £23,250. Then we had stamp duty at 3%, so that came to £2,790. Then we had a broker, the already mentioned refurbishment costs, sourcing fees, for now no cost for disbursements, but that was of course going to change as it's a bit like any other business on your employment contract. You know there will be more asked of you no matter your job description. And so I knew that there definitely would be more asked of my bank account. Now the last item on this list was onboarding list. £12,000 served in a very manipulative style. Now this fee and the sourcing fee are the costs that can be avoided and reduced substantially when you look for a property and furnish it on your own. That much is obvious. Personally, I have no clue about the property market, especially in the northeast of England, and also no interest in spending my time buying sofas and forks. So I'm happy to pay somebody who knows what they're doing and is happy to do it for me. So basically outsource those tasks. So we know the costs, uh, let's take a look at the potential income. Based on 80% occupancy, that is assuming the house would be let for 80% of the days in a year. So for £95 per night, the income would be £2,311.67 per month. That's an average. Like with any other business, some months would be less and some months would be more. But that's the average we're aiming for and something that other service accommodation properties in that area also do make. Okay, great. So now we know the initial costs, we know the potential income. Let's take a look at monthly costs. So mortgage repayment was estimated at £348.75. That was based on a 6% interest only mortgage with a loan to value at 75%. So with a 25% deposit I talked about earlier. The management fee was 20%, so £462.33. The maintenance was 5%, so £115 something. Then we had council tax, £150, gas and electric, Estimated, you know, these are the estimates, so 200, broadband 30, insurance 35, and water 25. The total was £1,000 
366 67. So monthly cash flow was estimated at 945 pounds. Now these figures, like I said, were estimates and could change very quickly, which of course they did pretty much immediately in this case. A quick chat with a broker revealed that the broker fee wouldn't be 350 pounds, but 595 pounds. So I updated the numbers. Next came the mortgage quotes. The offer I got was for a five-year fixed rate at 6.24%. So again, I updated the numbers. I also added the costs of accounting fees because that would come with running a limited company. It's something that is basically a requirement, so you can't avoid it. And I knew that would be about 100 pounds per month. as That's my current accounting fee. After that, the monthly cash flow was 830 pounds, 76 pence. To be honest, I was aiming for £800 total, so that was a good enough figure for me. Now, if you wonder if the initial cost would also differ, yes, they would. The estimates are just that, estimates. So I knew that we would need to keep that in mind. Some small admin costs like setting up a limited company, £12, and money transfer fees for £35 were things that were already to be considered. But I find that the biggest difference was in contingency planning. Let me explain. We were in October. Let's say we managed to exchange contracts, being very, very optimistic by the beginning of December. Having December as a month for installing central heating, because this is where we get the keys and we are actually able to do it. Onboarding, meaning furnishing the place, would also take time. At least a month, I was told possibly longer. So we were looking at at least two months of an empty property. And we would also need to give it time to get the first bookings. So like with any type of budgeting to be on the safe side, I thought that realistically we needed six months worth of the serviced accommodation monthly expenses put aside, not to stress about this bumpy beginning. That's about £6,100 if we assume there's no booking, so no management fee, but the remaining costs still need to be paid. Now, realistically, if we wanted to keep the cash flow more stable, we could easily put aside £1,000 per month and then spread the onboarding costs, so the furnishing, and pay that £12,000 not at once, but in installments, you know, spread them throughout the year. So not a big deal. We could have avoided that initial 6K contingency plan and also the 12K and just spread it out evenly. But then our circumstances changed. Not to dwell on the details, my boyfriend changed his mind and decided that he doesn't want to really invest in property at this stage. And that left me with a choice. Go on with the property purchase on my own or not. I ran the numbers again compared them to what it would look like if I invested this same money in the stock market and decided that I still wanted to go ahead with the purchase. But I didn't want to do it on my own. You know what? I just wasn't keen on having another mortgage on my own. The fact that the broker said the numbers for a two-year fixed mortgage simply didn't add up and I need to be tied up with that mortgage for five years suddenly felt too risky. I would need to save up much more, sell off some of my investments with those savings on top and be prepared to cover all the expenses if things just didn't go down to plan. And you know what? I felt that it wasn't something I was prepared to do just yet. The sourcing agency were really, really understanding and offered to speak again in half a year or so. So in theory, I still have time to change my mind. It's been three months and I haven't really done it yet but we'll see how it goes so this is where i am with the property investment palava ideally i'll still do it with a business partner we'll see how it goes hope you're having a good day and found this video useful in case you're considering getting into property yourselves thank you very much for watching and i'll see you in the next one and if i'm ready to jump in i will jump in but not just yet i think time will tell what happens next for now I keep on saving and if I'm ready to jump in, I will jump in, but not just yet. Ideally, I'll still do it with a business partner. We'll see how it goes. Hope you're having a good day and found this video useful in case you're considering getting into property yourselves. 
Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.